Good everyone, welcome to this video, and today we have a review on the Messerschmitt 264 Heavy Bomber. Now, this is actually my first bomber review, and well, I wasn't expecting this thing to be, shall we say, too excellent, but pretty average in most aspects. I was proven far wrong. This is an amazing aircraft. That I do have to say. Obviously there are a few teething problems which I will go over shortly, but I will obviously cover that appropriately. So we're going to start out with um, the engines. So we do have four Junkers Jumo 213Es, which produce around 1700 horsepower on normal and 2052 on WEP. These things push this thing into the sky. This thing wants to climb. And this thing actually climbs really well for a four engine heavy. It's a bit like the MB162. Once you get the engines upgraded on that, that thing climbs really well. I might have to try this thing in um in arcade, see how it flies. Cause then I could use it as a base bomber because it's rank three. It could do any daily task or whatever I had. Let's see. So the Messerschmitt 264, as I mentioned beforehand, we have a single nose gun, which isn't, which I've only fired once, and even then, it's not damaging at all. The 20 mils on top are really useful. The lower 20 mil is also really useful, and the side blister guns are actually pretty dang good. Would I say this is the best heavy bomber I've flown? Well, it's certainly one of the best, but it's not the best bomber I've flown. I don't know I said heavy bomber, but um, just in general, like, this is a really good bomber. So what about stats? Well, obviously, since Gaijin can't be asked to put um, base bombing into um, your stats, I had a total of 7 air targets, 10 ground targets, which was in the first battle. I didn't get any more ground targets. I'm glad I kind of went for him as well. Um... And then, obviously, just one death. Now, that was caused by a P-63 King Cobra. He got in my ass, or got up my ass. I couldn't really do anything to shake him off. So, I just jumped on the 20 mil, took him with me, basically. We, I was on two engines the whole flight. Um, Jane Pearl 3 will clarify that for you. But, this is certainly one of the better heavy bombers I've flown in a long time. And, well... Yeah, no ships destroyed, sadly. We did not get to drop anything on uh, ships. So the defensive coverage does have some blind spots. Um, lower left, near the wings, are pretty common. Lower down, near the front of the nose, is also pretty common. So if in a P-61 Black Widow, that's where you want to aim for. You want to go either underneath the nose or underneath the right-hand wing. So even then, if only this gun's shooting at you, it's a 13mm, it's not going to do much. However, the 264 pilot, if he's smart, can just roll it and have two 20 mils firing at you, which is pretty dang effective, let's just say that. So um, what about bomb load? Well, I didn't really cover this in the first flight. Obviously, universal for the 20 mils and armor targets in the 13s. You get a 9x250 bomb load, you then get... 3, 250, and 5, 6, 500s. You then get 4, 1,000, which is actually a really good... Well, I think this is the best payload, personally. And how come it adds to the miles an hour in max speed? I, I don't know. That's probably a bug. And then um, you have, obviously, the... Again, this is this is weird. Um, then, obviously, you have the 2 Satans and the 3 times 250s. Overall, they're pretty good bomb loads for each of them. Obviously, the stock bomb load is good for one and a half bases. The second bomb load is good for two bases and a half. The third bomb load, which is the 4-1000s, is good enough for all three bases, plus a drop on the airfield. And the fourth bomb load is good enough for two bases and a half on another. So realistically, you want to take the 4-1000s. They're pretty dang effective and so if you're going to go down the um payload tree it'd be best if you go 500 thousand to leave the satans and the 13 mil turrets till last because the 13 mil turrets are entirely useless in most aspects 
Um, the 20 mils you'll want to get upgraded because they do jam pretty quickly. That's another thing to note. Anyway, let's jump right into the battle and then we'll obviously go over the aircraft itself. But yeah, I wasn't expecting this thing to be all that great. And well, I will cover the um, the final problem at the end of well, at the end of this battle. We'll obviously return to the hangar. Then I could point out um, just overall what really is wrong with this aircraft. And personally, I don't see why it's shall we say limited. So. What you got to bear in mind in this battle, I was on my second flight. I'd literally just finished recording the um, first battle after... Um, and then obviously I jumped into this battle. I think I, I got quite a few mods done and obviously got the 20 mils done. So me and Andrexo are going to have a good discussion in chat, but whilst we're climbing up to altitude, and you can see what I mean by the climb rate, this thing's actually pretty damn good for a 400 heavy. Um, we're just going to go a bit on about some of the matches I had, really. Obviously, my first flight, you guys saw that. Second flight is this, which was absolutely amazing. Um, third flight didn't go particularly too badly. I mean, I got two bases, survived the game, nothing really interesting. Fourth game, I got another air kill, plus two bases, and plus an airfield. Because um, I had a single bomb left for the airfield, um, dropped it on the airfield, and then my teammates finished it off. So I do technically count it as an airfield kill. Then um, me and James took flight on the, I think we took flight on the fifth and the sixth flight, if I remember rightly. And then the seventh flight, which is the final one to spade it, wasn't anything particularly interesting. The sixth flight was obviously my only death where I got two kills and um, I believe on the fifth well on the fifth flight I killed a Spitfire but got no bases so this thing's actually pretty dang tough which again you're gonna see towards the end so to speak so I nicknamed this thing the poor man's BV and well obviously we do have a BV in the battle but he's fine like a numbskull I mean no offence, um, AR24R, you kind of deserve that. No one does that in a PV unless you want to look like a twat. Obviously, I don't know why it's come up as six bombs dropped. Oh yes, I have the, um, the upgraded payload. And well, here we go with the first instance of a flyby by the Messerschmitt 264. So I thought, well, he's climbing up to intercept us, I might as well intercept him. And well, he regretted that decision. First air kill. I forgot to mention, I'm using the 6x500 and the 3x250 payload. That's where I cocked up, because I realised at the last second. But yeah, 3500s are good enough for a base, 6250s are good enough for a base, 1 Satan and 1 1000. So, I just put in chat, fighters dealt with winky face, and Adrexo just laughs at that. I don't think that P-38 was expecting that. But, whatever. The job's done. And, well, we get to drop on the airfield, obviously. Me and Adrexo took out a base each, the BB took out a base. So I guess it wasn't all useless, but... Sadly, me and Andrexo do not have the payload to finish off this base. Obviously, Andrexo has just dropped the remaining of his bombs. And I'm sorry, I just love this engine sound. The engine sound in this aircraft is just one of my favourite selling points. But um, he puts in chat, MB264 is not a fire, change my mind. To be fair though, I didn't actually engage in a dogfight with him. I just fly by him, as I call it. Okay, so obviously we're coming over the target now, and well, you can see, base is actually pretty dang hit by um, Andrexo. Obviously, if we had the BV alive, and it actually climbed, we would have killed this bait, or the, we would have killed this airfield, but yeah, no big deal. I wouldn't have had the game that we did. Obviously, everything's out, that's 3500s and 3250s out. It's not enough to kill the airfield, but we wasn't far off. 
Now there is a lot of dead zones, so I am going to cut ahead, but well, I'm gonna speed it up more like. But first of all, we have a little tow rag. This Kai 61 Premium, which I don't get why you would buy the Kai 61 Premium, I mean, it's a good plane, it's the 1B, which is the co variant. Well, no, the Otsu. And he's attempting to intercept a Messerschmitt 264 at 18,000 feet, which is 450 cal machine guns. Yeah, that wasn't going to end well, was it, buddy? He sniped his ass, and then he starts raging with his guns. However, in me doing that, I put by Felicia, which is an old meme. Um, yeah, the lower 20 mil really comes in handy. I'm glad it's no longer a 13 mil, otherwise I'd have probably had a bit of a problem. But now, if you look on your left, we are the last ones alive um, against four enemy aircraft. However, that's soon going to be three. Well, it is three because the Kai 61 is currently spinning out of control. And, well, the pilot doesn't seem to want to bail, so that's his choice. One thing to point out is that this thing actually does pretty dang well in vertical maneuvers. As you can see here, I've stuck the nose up just to drain some speed, gain some altitude. And, well, yeah, this is pretty dang good, I'm not going to lie. But um, Andrexo was saying um, we could survive if we just stay in the air, and I was like, nah, nah, that, that's the coward's way out. We should go for a landing attempt. So we start making our way back to the airfield. Now the flight back doesn't take too long. This plane isn't the fastest, but it gets the job done. However, it's the descent or the descent part. Obviously I don't know kilometers now, so I had to quickly translate it. But you can see I've got it at 8 times speed and it is taking forever for this plane to lose altitude. It just doesn't want to lose it. And well, considering I've descended faster in a bloody Sunderland from 15,000 feet. Yeah, this plane has a severe problem with losing its altitude. That's really one of its weaknesses. But I'm not going to show out the landing attempt because this is my second landing that I did in the aircraft. Obviously the first one I left in the first flight. I only ever had to land this plane twice, if I remember rightly. I only had to land it twice. And this is the second attempt at doing so. Don't worry, I'm not going to do it dreamed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have all four engines working here. We took some minor damage from the Kai-61, but that's going to be the least of our concerns later on. The enemy team have reduced themselves somehow to um, just a single Yak-3. For some reason, the rest of them crashed. I have no idea why. Some of them j well, not all of them crashed. Um, some of them did J out on the runway, which, to be fair, f their choice. I mean, I would have wanted to fight two 264s on my own, but... So at this point, I'm obviously using the flaps to slow the beast down. Um, if you're wondering about the decal on the tail, that is a pinup Germany decal that you could get from some event quite a while back. And obviously, since the bomb loads enough to, well, the 4-1000 is enough to level the base, I put Weaver Fly on it. But obviously, I don't have the 4-1000s yet. But I just put it there anyway because this thing's just such a perfect base bomber. So what you want to do when you're coming in to land this big beast, obviously on four engines, which is it's perfect, well, I'm pretty certain it's meant to land on four, that was sarcasm, um, you want to keep it above around 120 miles an hour, so around about, I think that's 200 kilometers an hour, I don't know, I don't know miles an hour to kilometers an hour, I will, I'll google it at some point, <laughs> and probably leave it a pin comment. But you want to keep it above that speed, otherwise you have a significant risk of stalling. Obviously we have a lot of wing area, but wing area doesn't mean anything when you're in a stall. The second lander was a bit forceful, I was a bit forceful on the landing gear, but the landing gear took it well. And we slowly pulled to a stop. 
But yes, I spent nearly, what, five to ten minutes trying to drop this thing's altitude. It really doesn't like losing altitude. That's probably one of the... I'm going to say one of its three main drawbacks. Second drawback. Um, the 20 mils when they're stock, jam so quickly. But to be fair, once you get them upgraded, I have had no issues with them. The third issue I will go over in the hangar shortly, of course. Once you do repair on the airfield, you do get an air spawn, because obviously the aircraft is rather large and it can't exactly take off on its own. Well, it could, but I'll have a bloody good time with it. What I did was I decided to wait for and direct, so I'm not circling the airfield, I'm turning away from the airfield, I'm just circling in front of it. If the Yak-3 comes, I will fly out the airfield and I will take him on myself. So, um, obviously I'm just there climbing away and we're looking around because obviously we don't know where the Yak-3 is. What we didn't know at the time was that the Yak-3 was actually stalking us. But, don't worry. It's going to be fine. So this Yak-3 pilot is obviously coming in a bit too fast and well, that's going to be the least of his concerns. We're just here discussing, really, and then we notice, well, I notice on the minimap, the Yak-3, and I'm thinking, crap, need to level the nose. So then I can get as many guns on target, prevent, present as much profile as I can, so then we can see the damage model of this thing. This is really the only severe damage other than the death that I took. He says, come to me, and I said, there's no time. I'm going to have to take him on myself. I jammed the 20 mils, but the 20 mils set him on fire, and the 13 millimeter machine guns finish him off. But we take an absolute beat in doing it. I put in chat, bye bitch, just because I couldn't think, I didn't want to put bye Felicia, you don't do, use the same thing twice. But that's pretty much the end of the battle. So we'll have a look at the damage that we took. Obviously, the, that is not actually a fuel tank, that thing there that's black. That is a liquid cooling system for, the, I believe, the two right engines. Um, he said, like, to do three kills on a bomber. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, even for a bomber. To be fair, I've, do I've done an ace in a Kai 67 before, but I think I just the screenshot out somewhere. Um, the right wing damage wasn't severe. For some reason, the Yak-3 went for this area here. I don't advise that. Yeah, there's a fuel tank here, but I do not advise doing that to a 264. So let's return to the hangar, and then we can go over the final thing that's wrong with this aircraft. Well, all I'll say is, before I show you what's wrong with this aircraft, you will want a defibrillator on standby. So stock, this aircraft repair cost is 46,000 lions. That's 4 six. And then three zeros on the end of that. That sounds like a lot. It is. But luckily I got away with it in three repairs. But it's not that. When it's spaded. Are we ready? Three, two, one. Anyone who doesn't have a defibrillator on standby and doesn't want to have a heart attack from the repair cost. Look away now. Yeah. That's a big fat repair cost, isn't it? I'm not going to say it for those of you who don't want to see the repair cost on our poor sods, such as It's Phillips, um, Dark Angel. Um, like I said, I only went through four or three repairs. I got two backup vehicles in one battle. And I even got, when I was um, using the BF-109B1 to grind this thing, which will appear in the Talisman series, um, I got... A talisman on the flak bus, which is going to be interesting for when we get around to tanks. But yeah, overall, would I say get this bomber? Hell to the yes. Um, if you're a BV pilot, I think you'll enjoy this thing. Um, Hartwick Crypt Star doesn't like this thing as much as the BV, but he says it's still good nonetheless. And, well, he's not wrong. This thing is really good. But like I say, though, take into account the defensive armament jams when stock really easily. Um, your engine 
oil and liquid cooling systems are very vulnerable to damage. I soon discovered that when I um, shut down the Spitfire, he damaged the left-hand cooling system with a single 7.9 or 7.7, .7, and that was the end of engine one. But this thing flies perfectly fine on three engines, flies perfectly fine on two engines, but on one, I can't say I've ever had that, but she doesn't seem to like it. Obviously, I've tested the no engines, and well, that doesn't do too badly. It does glide for quite some time. But yes, um, if you can get this plane, get it. I seriously advise getting it. It's after the Heinkel 111H16, which really needs to go down in BR. This thing completely obsoletes it. But um, yeah. So, overall, get this plane. There is a bit of armor protecting the pilot, but to be honest, it's not going to make a difference against some of the guns you'll see. But other than that, fantastic aircraft, and I cannot fault it. The first flight went well, that flight went well, and I got to fly by a P-38, which is special, shall we say. So, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the ME264 Heavy Bomber. Obviously, I said totally get this thing. Um, one other thing to note is that the elevator does not respond really well at any speeds, but it will do the job, so to speak. The roll rate's really good as well. Anyway, catch you all on the next one.